I wanted today to help people who might be using some of these laser cutters coming out that don't have a lot of fancy software for them. And if you are, if, if you want to make a go of using the free software like Laser Gerbil, well, this is how you're going to do it. Now, we're going to be making today a keychain that has both elements like images and text that has to be rastered on there and then elements that get cut around the outside edge and once you're done doing this project you're going to know everything that you need to know in order to make cool things with with a laser cutter but you may notice that we are not in laser gerbil at this moment that is because we do not start in laser gerbil we have to do our design in an external program, and the external program that I'm using is called Inkscape. Now, Inkscape is a fantastic program, and it is free, so there's no reason for you to not go out and download it. And it is a vector editing software, but it can do images as well. So let me show you how we're gonna do that today. To start with, on the left-hand side of Inkscape, you're gonna wanna select Create a Circle Eclipse, uh, ellipse <laughs> eclipse we're just going to put a little circle into our scene and then across the top here actually we're going to select the selection tool the arrow tool and now we have these controls for our object x and y is its location we'll we'll deal with that later for now though i want this to be 60 millimeters across and Ooh, 40 millimeters, 60 and 40. Yeah, that's good. And then I'm going to hold down control while moving up my mouse wheel to zoom in on just that part. Now, it probably came with a color in it, and we don't want any color on the inside. We only want a color on the outside edge. We want the outline, but we want no fill. So to do that across the bottom, the colors that we have here, click the X, and that will get rid of the fill. But to change the border color, hold down shift and click a color. And uh, I'm gonna click black like that. So there we go. So now we've got our black outline and, and basically right now we're saying the black outline is what we want to cut, but we'll be doing something tricky in just a second. Select the circle again, put another circle on the side right here, and then Select the Select tool and change the width and the height of that circle to, oh, I don't know, 6. Yeah, 6 is good. Now, you might be, you know, trying to move this around, and, and, and you want there to be a little bit of a gap here because you don't want the laser to cut right through there. If you put too much heat in a small area, it'll cut it. But, you know, you can eyeball where you want this to go, or we can use the Align tool. Select both of these. And then now if the if you don't have this menu up on the side, which can be annoying, you need to open up some of these menus here. Now I already have align and distribute, which you can pull up by hitting control shift A. Or again, if you don't have these menus up here and they, they don't by default, you're going to want to come over and oh, I always have to search for them here, but I believe it's in object. And is there a line in here? There it is, align and distribute. You click that and it will add this menu to the side. And we're gonna be building up a whole bunch of menus that we're gonna use here and just keep them here. So now that we have the align and distribute, we look for the button that looks like it's aligning everything to the same middle point on the horizontal. So that's that button right there. We click it and let me, let me really throw off the alignment here and then select both of these and hit that button. Boop, see, it aligns them together. And it's the order, so it's the last selected. So by doing it like this, selecting that one, and then selecting that one, it's aligning it to where the hole was. You can change how it does that. But now we've got this aligned. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some text. So grab the text tool right here, just click inside, it doesn't really matter. And let's, let's type some inspiring message. And I found this message uh, on my car one day. Somebody just put it in a sticky note and stuck it on my car. And, and I really, I didn't ask for it, but you no, know, I've kind of enjoyed this message since then. And you can choose whatever font you want. In fact, we can choose different fonts for different parts. So maybe I'll take stronger 
and I'll use this font that I downloaded a while ago called, uh, ooh, where is it? Uh, maybe, maybe I'll just choose a different font, headliner, or, and then uh, down here I'll take the Van You Believe, and I'll make it smaller. So you can just play with the text and, and make this however you want. Keep in mind, if you make things too small, uh, the laser cutter or the laser engraver may not be able to um, engrave it. You, it, it. It has an upper limit of the detail that you can put on there, but its upper limit is more than what a 3D printer can produce, so I like it for that. Now, I'm just uh, resizing it a little bit, and if you... If you uh, hold that, or if you just resize it, you know, you see that you can make it shorter or, or longer than you want. But if you want to keep those proportions, hold down control while you resize it. And there you go. And if you want to keep it centered, hold down shift and control. And that will keep it right there. All right. Now, I'm going to do one more thing to this. I am going to add, uh, and I'm going to go up to file and hit import. There we go. Now, I went online and found this nice little scroll pattern, but for yours, you could use, just choose whatever picture you want. You can even put a color picture in here, although color pictures can be a little bit tricky because it does convert them to black and white and then converts them to just a black uh, line, but we'll talk about that in a second. But make sure, be careful anytime you're downloading something online to pay attention to the license because if you didn't make it, you might not have the, the rights to it. And if you, if you want to sell these or make a business of these, just be careful where you're getting images. Now, I'm not selling these. I'm not worried about where it came from, but I did find a royalty-free one. But, you know, if you, if you can't, uh, make your own, you know? Always safest to just make your own. Now, I've taken this image and I clicked on it twice so that I could get the rotation controls and then I held down control while rotating it to snap that rotate. I'm just going to put it in place and click it again so I get resizing and, and resize it smaller just so that I have a nice little, nice little scrolly scrolly thingy at the bottom here. Just something pretty to look at. And you might notice that it's above my text. And we can fix that by going to, I believe it's object and lower. But you, then you notice that's the page down. So you can lower it and page down and page down and page down until it's below everything so that everything just looks good. Now, we're going to need to do a couple of things here. One thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to save the cut, the, the vectory cut parts, and the things that we want to raster or, or put on with a bitmap method separately. Now, it's important in Laser Gerbil that you have references for both. And so what, what we need is for the image of this to be as big as the cut will be so that they line up. And one easy way to do that is just don't get rid of the cut lines. Leave them in there. However, if your cut lines are black, it will first try to raster your cut lines and then it will try to cut along your cut lines. And that, that might be less desirable. So what we want is a way to make these cut lines disappear without getting rid of them. And how we do that is we change them to a light color that we can filter out. And the lighter, the better. So that's why I'm going to select my cut lines here, both of them by holding down shift. And then I'm going to come down to the colors and I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to choose yellow to make my cut lines a very light yellow. And if, if you scroll down here, you can find some very, very light colors that way, it's easy to filter them out by just saying, hey, anything that's not real dark, get rid of. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. I'm going to leave mine yellow. Now, select everything, and what we want to do is export this as a PNG. Now, again, there's a menu on the side, but if you don't have that menu, you just go File, Export PNG Image, and boom, this menu shows up on the side. And then what do we want to export? We want to export the selection. That's why I selected everything. What resolution do we want to do? Well, I like to do 300 DPI, but whatever resolution you export, remember what that resolution is. So change to the resolution to 300 DPI, export as, 
We'll go ahead and just choose a location for this and we'll just call this stronger keychain. And then now that didn't export it. I know it seems like it will, but you have to actually hit the export button. Boom. And now we have a PNG image with all of this on here. But now we also need to save an SVG that doesn't have the text in it because if we save it the way that it is right now, it's going to want to cut along the edges of all of our text because our text is a vector object. The image that we brought in is not a vector object, and so it's not going to try cutting along there, but our text is vector objects. So we need to kind of make those disappear. Now we could just delete them, but I'm going to show you another way. First thing we need to do is we need to have the layers menu available, which you can get by hitting shift control L, or I believe it's under edit here. So I can't find it right now. So just trust me, shift control L will bring up the layers menu and we need to add a new layer. So we're going to come in here. There's a little plus button right here. And we're going to call this layer text. And then we're going to select the text and we're going to select our image, our scroll image, all the stuff that we don't want to have visible. We're going to right mouse click on it and say move to layer. We're going to move it to our layer text. And you'll notice now that image is sitting on top of the vector lines. That's because the text layer is above the layer layer. You know, I'm going to double click that and call that cut. Well, if we want the cut layer on top, we simply move it down and now it's behind. So we're doing great. Now what we can do is we can hide that. Well, we can hide either one of them. I hide, hid the cut, but I didn't want to do that. I want to hide the text. There we go. And now the only thing that's visible is the cut lines. And this is the only part. If we save it like this and then bring it into laser gerbil, this is the only part that it will cut. Even though the text is here, it's hidden. Laser gerbil won't respond to it. So now we just need to take this document and save it. All right, so we're just gonna save it right here as stronger keychain. All right, so now we can go to laser gerbil. We have our image and we have our vector and we can bring them both in but we have to bring them in one at a time so we go file open file and which one do we bring in do we bring in the the image or do we bring in the cut first well whichever one we bring in first it's going to do first and you don't want to cut before you do your rastering because sometimes after cutting and after the thing falls loose then the image, it, it might shift and so it might not be as clean. So to have it be more clean, we're going to do the image first. So click on the PNG that we exported. And you'll see in this menu that this, this is where we ch uh, have it decide how it's going to interpret the image. Now, the conversion tool here is really what we're, what we're looking at here. But, you know... Take a look at this white clip. If I bring this white clip up and down, you'll notice that it, uh, I don't know what it's doing with that, but you'll notice that we can bring that cut line back in or make it go away. That's what I was talking about. Because it's yellow, we can take the white clip up and we can make that yellow line disappear. So that's why we made it a light color. Now, what are we going to do here? The conversion tool is very powerful. There's lots of cool choices we can have. Line to line tracing basically means that it's going to take the image and it's going to create it by like doing a dot matrix printer, going back and forth and only turning on the laser where it has the black parts. But we can also do one bit dithering. And this one's good if you have a grayscale image, like a picture that you're trying to bring in and it will try to stipple the black lines to make you know kind of simulate gray and you can choose the different dithering options down here for that vectorize tries to trace trace around the outside edge and then it's going to essentially cut along those lines we don't want to do that today but maybe you'll want to in the future center line tries to identify the center of the line and follow along and if these lines are thin enough this can actually create a vectorized version of your image. However, that's not what we want to do today. And then pass through 
yeah, pass through is basically like line to line tracing, but you don't get the ability to control it. It just tries to treat it like it is. So don't do that. Line to line to line tracing is what we want today. Direction horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. Lots of fun options. You can have the line go side to side, up up and down, or diagonal. Quality, let's see. Oh, how, how many lines per millimeter you want it to do. The higher this number, the more detail you're going to put in here, but also the more heat you're going to put into the area. So if you up this quality, remember that you will be putting more heat and more detail. So you may want to have a less powerful laser for that part. Uh, line preview. Hey, it kind of gives you the idea of, of how much detail you're going to gain or lose that way. Okay, we're good. We hit next. Now at this point, a little menu comes up and this menu is super, super important because this is your only time when you will be able to set the speed and power of your laser for this job, for your material. If you set something wrong here and you need to go back, then you've got to just start all over. Really, that's the way Laser Gerbil works. This is your only chance to change this. So, unless you want to edit G-code by hand. <laughs> so make sure you get your engraving speed and your power correct. And, and notice that it says 300 is 30% of the power. If you wanted it to be a full power beam, it would be 1000, not 100. Ah, take that up with the people who made Laser Gerbil. It's weird. But here's the other thing. Remember I said I exported that as 300 DPI? Well, you need the width and the height to be exactly what we set it at. So if we just say auto size to 300 DPI, it will figure out the height and the width for you. And that's super cool. And that's a, a super easy way. But if you forget that step, if you accidentally forget to resize it, then you've got to start all over and go back because this is your one chance to do it. You hit create. And here we see, you can kind of see that it's, it's moving along this way, but then it's only cutting here. So this is good. This is exactly what we want. In fact, it looks like it starts at the bottom and then works its way up. So we've got our engraving, but now we need to cut. So we go back up to file, we append file, and this time we bring in the SVG for our project. And this is the one time that you are going to be able to set the speed and power for your laser. So if you mess this, you're going to have to start all over. Now, this is going to be different for each material, but for the material that we're using today, I believe this is correct for wood. I don't know. If, if, if you need to change these settings, if you need to redo this, if you need to do this a couple of different times and change the settings, yeah, you just have to go through all these steps in Laser Gerbil. Hit create, and why is it way up there? Oh, it's way up there because, let's go back here, I forgot an important step. So let me go back to my, my Inkscape. Unhide the text, select everything. Well, we wanna select everything. And what you wanna do is, in the X and the Y, set those both zero now by default inkscape is setting everything to the upper left hand corner then the other thing that you want to do is go the uh, file no edit there it is resize page to selection and it just kind of changes the the page size to be just tight around here now i'm going to rehide my text resave it now I got to go back to Laser Gerbil and do this all again because that's Laser Gerbil. So here we go. Open the file, open up the PNG, make sure we get our settings correct right here. Fortunately, it does remember the settings that we did except for the auto size for some reason. So re hit auto size and create it. Boom, there's our first half. Now, pen the file, add our cut, make sure we get the settings correct. Fortunately, it remembers them. Hit OK and boom, the laser is now perfectly lined up with our engraving and you are ready now to take this laser cut and, and once you know what you're doing it, it really is a fairly fast process but you can take this and you can either 
file, save, and export your G-code, and then carry it over to your laser engraver. Or if your computer is right next to your laser engraver, you can use the custom buttons down here to do your cutting and trace around it and make sure everything is the way you want it. So there you go. That is how you laser gerbil. I hope that that helps somebody.